Hey everybody, I'm Blitz. Welcome to a brand new series on a game called Pillars of Eternity. Pillars of Eternity used to live under the name of Project Eternity during its Kickstarter days where Obsidian Entertainment brought in a whole bunch of money. Uh, the game is a companion role-playing game or a CRPG much the same way of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and Icewind Dale 1 and 2. And actually, Obsidian Entertainment contains a lot of the same members as Black Isle Studios, who developed Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. So if you like those games, you're probably going to like this one. If you're not familiar with it, the game according to the Steam page is where you recapture the deep sense of exploration, the joy of pulsating adventure, and the thrill of leading your own band of companions across a new fantasy realm and into the depths of monster-infested dungeons in search of lost treasures and ancient mysteries. That sounds awesome to me. So we're going to jump into the game. Uh, it does contain a, a little bit of strong language for children may not be, uh, you may want to guard your children on that. And also this series will contain complete spoilers. Uh, so if you're sensitive to either of those, may not watch it. So here we go. We're going to jump into the game. Create a brand new game here. And we can see right away there are four brand new game settings, and then these two things. Uh, easy, normal, hard, and then extra hard. We have enemies receive bonuses to stats and encounters. So that's kind of like enemies cheaty. Uh, actually, I've read that nobody in the QA team has beat on the hardest difficulty and the trial of iron. This is one save file. If your character dies, game over, hardcore mode. And then expert mode is kind of a helper function in the game, kind of tutorials and stuff to help you out. We're gonna do normal. We're not going to go cheesy McCheesy mode, and we're just going to go into the normal, because that's it's kind of, eh, if you have an understanding of the game, it, it should be all right. So we're going to get here. This is going to give us a little bit of storyline, and I'll be quiet for this, and then we'll jump into character creation. So here we go. Let's have fun. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Interesting. All right. So here is character creation. We get to pick the guy who is on the uh, the convoy thing. So there are, as you can see at the top, we have our male or female. We're gonna play with the male. We're gonna hit the next button. Then we get into race. There are six different races in the game. There is the humans, and then there are the Navi, who I like to call the Navi. I guess they're the Amawu. Um, um, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I call them the Navi because they look like the Avatar cat people. The blue cat people. You can also change up. Uh, the dwarf is typical dwarf, short, stout, got some might, a little less dexterity, but they're they're buff, good dexterity. Then you got the tree hugging hippies, uh, the elves who I don't like elves. Just too much dwarf fortress in me to, to like an elf. Um, they're they're good for rangers. Uh, they got good dexterity and perception. Then the orlon, they're kind of the the hobbits or the the halflings. Um, and they're kind of the smaller race that the cultures don't really consider them civilized. They're the long ears and and stuff. There's actually two different breeds. And then there's the godlike. These are interesting. They're they're kind of like a half god, half person, and they're they're really weird. They've got strange physical aspects associated to them, and they're kind of the good for the dexterity and the intellect down there. We're gonna play as our main character as Orlan. And we're going to go with him. We're going to do a rogue as my class. We'll get into here. And there are two sub-races here. We have the Hearth Orlan, which uh, they get minor threat when attacking any tyrant that is also being targeted by a teammate. They convert some of their hits to crits. So it's kind of like a flanking, uh, maybe a little bit of flank 
involved. So that's kind of cool. We can get extra damage if we are if we have a tank that we're playing with. And then you have the the wild Orlon. There's the backstory. These guys look to me like uh, Ewoks or something goofy. I don't like them. <laughs> and they they have additional defenses if they've been hit by a will attack. Will attacks are kind of the uh, the spells. The spells are the mentally based attacks, so the mind controls and stuff. So we're going to go with the Hearth Orlan and hit next button. And we're going to go class. As I said before, we're going to play with the Rogue. But there are some other ones here. The Barbarian is the typical um, hack and slash crazy Viking sort of guy. And we have the Cypher. Cyphers are really fun. Um, and they're they're kind of mind control -y, um, So that they can do like a a dominate mind sort of thing. Fighters are your typical your typical melee guy. Then you have the paladin who is the holy or the the fighter with some some religious aspects to it. The rangers, your range guy, and they usually have an animal companion, your wizards, your sorcerer sort of thing. Chanter is kind of a bard-ish and they have sort of um, ancient workers of magic hollowed phrases stirring in them. Uh, it's not really a bard. It's kind of just an easy way to explain it. They have a lot of lore and mechanics. Kind of maybe, I, I don't even know how to describe it. We have a druid who, and druids are the the shapeshifters and they have some spells, more of a natural, na natural stuff. The monks are super duper fast paced, uh, a lot of melee attack. Priests are the healers in the game. And rogue is our stabby McStabber face. Uh, priest, there's some other things you can do with it too, but uh, there's a lot of buffers. I think the Chanter and the Cypher and the Priest kind of have buffs. Barbarian has self-buffing to make himself go enraged sort of things. There's a lot more stuff, and there's links down below again for the wikis that you can go check out anything that you want to see on it. I probably mashed it up pretty badly, but that's just a 50,000 foot flyover. So there are two different abilities here. We have the Blinding Strike and the Crippling Strike. Blind does... Uh, it kind of blinds them. It does a little interrupt blinded, which makes their accuracy reduced by 25. And that's against the reflex save. And then we have, it's a full attack for us. And then we do 1.25 damage on it. Crippling is kind of the same damage and they get hobbled instead. So their dexterity is reduced. Dexterity is kind of, um, let's see, where is their dex? Yeah, we can see that on the next page. So uh, we're going to do the blinding strike. I think that's a little bit better for the way I'm going to be playing him. And we get to put in our attribute points. Might is the straight up damage. Uh, so if we put a point in there, you can see it goes up 3% for every point that we get. Uh, it does damage. That's actually how much damage we do. And fortitude is essentially our resistance to physical attacks. I think. Physical attacks, might, and constitution influenced by any effects. Okay, we're going to get this up kind of a little bit. Dexterity is the main one. This dexterity and might. So this is our damage, and then dexterity is like our action speed and how fast we can go. And then the reflex, which is the kind of the save against AoEs or a giant fireball filing into you and on the ground stepping in AoE attacks. Kind of resist those a little bit. Uh, perception is another big one for us because I want this guy to be an interrupter. So uh, if we have more interrupt chance, this deter determines how likely you are to cancel your opponent's action. So we can blind them and we can get a uh, inter interrupting. That could be kind of fun. Intellect is the, the AOE and durations of, of will. So our spells and other area of attack effects. We want a little bit in there. Resolve's kind of good. We, we get two bonus points for being an Orlan and an Aider. Um, so we'll, we'll just stay with that. So let's put in our remaining six points. We can go up to 19. That is the highest, or I guess 18 is the highest you can get in any one individual. I want to get a little bit up there, maybe a 17 somewhere, and then some might for extra damage. You can also drop down and resolve a little bit. So, um, that, that seems all right to me. Constitution, we don't want a negative constitution because that's our overall endurance and health. We don't really want to do that. We also get the sneak attack. And that's a bonus attack that we get to damage uh, when the target is blinded, flanked, hobbled, paralyzed, petrified, or any status effect. Next up is the attributes. All right, so that's an aider that we talked about a little while ago. Uh, we can also pick these other ones, higher decks. We can get a little additional decks, and we get a little resolve from this one. And old villa, we get intellect and constitution, might, and perception. You can pause it and look through these things if you want to know more. And they're beyond the wiki too. 
So we're going to play with a dead fire archipelago. That is the location that we're from. And that gives us a little more dexterity. And dexterity again is our um, balance grace overall. I agility, sort of. So next up, we get some background information. Now background is kind of the secondary skill. I think this is called a talent. Forget the actual name for it. Um, but we can pick different things. So we're going to go with the raider. That'll give us plus one to stealth and plus one to let, uh, athletics. We want a stealth. We want a guy who can sneak around. Uh, mechanics would be another one to get. So we can get stealth and mechanics might be a good one. But I didn't see that in here. Mechanics is like your trap, getting rid of the traps. Lore. Lore is actually a decent one too. Lore tells you a little bit about the area. Uh, higher lore values allow the character to reach higher level scrolls. So there's scrolls that you can get in the game too. So we're going to go with the athletics and the stealth and continue on. Next up is the character creation skill or the uh, how they look. We're going to do hair color. We're going to do like the, the orangey one. And then we're going to go to the hair. We want the mohawk. Yeah, there it is. We need the facial hair of just a generally a good a good manly beard. See that? That's not too much. It's not over the top. It's just a good a good beard. And then we can change how, how he looks. Kind of wish you could get rid of the cat cat eyes and the big goofy ears and make him more of a, a halfling. But that's fine. We can change out the different stuff. Um, this is the color of his clothing. I like that red on them. And we can do the secondary in red too. No, how about black? Okay, that's better. And then skin color doesn't really matter. We can get blue. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> it's like the gnome. He's a, not a gnome. Uh, what are those goofy little things called? With the gargamel? Oh man, forgot. <laughs> I can think of the song, but I can't think of their names. Anyway, we're going to go to the portrait. That is basically the only portrait for the male. Except that thing, that weird cat you walk thing, and then you got the Navi again. So we're gonna go with this guy. And then voice. There are a bunch of voices. Quiet. Yes? I've got this. Let us end this. Let's go with the feisty one. Cause a good rogue is feisty. And then we're gonna go with Blitz. Guys, we can. Perfect. So we got it. Now we're done. And I think it's gonna bring us into another thing. Another cutscene. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and staggering jowls quivering. As for emphasis, and their smurfs, that's the word I was looking for. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Cool. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? Comprende, Captain. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. All right. So, uh, where can we find the you berries? On a bush that's common around here. Find them over there. Looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. All right. What are these Nothing runes? You won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay. If you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Cool. Who built the runes? See, this is the hardest thing. I can go through and read through all of these dialogue choices 
in a Let's Play video and it could get really, really long. So what I'm going to do is kind of skip through some of them. We're going to read some of them that I find interesting. It's It gets really, really difficult to make it to, to please everyone with this. So I could read everything, I could have them read everything, or we can skip everything, but we're going to kind of do a little bit. Obviously it's dangerous outside, it's an RPG, we're, we're going to get attacked probably sometimes thing here. There's huge rocks coming out of the ground that these things, we could look at that because that's kind of interesting. They don't got Audra where you come from? Audra. Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. All right, so we have some sort of crystal green growth growing up. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Hmm. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Cool. So they're kind of crazy rocks. Uh, who built the runes? Settlers called them in Gwithans. All right. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins, tell you that much. Hmm. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead. I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. All right. So we get an armor-clad woman who's been on the journeys... Sleeping on an uneven ground with a blanket Kalisha. and a pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha, Kalisha is our new friend. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind... You drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's okay. Keep going before you keel over. Perfect. Yeah. We get in the actual game now. So, welcome to Pillars of Eternity. First visit to the world. I'm going to watch these windows. They're a little bit annoying, and I'm going to leave them up. I'm probably not going to do too much of them. Uh, you can read them on your own if you want to. Just pause the game and see it. To select a party member, click on the, the circle. What you, you can need? select circle mm -hmm. or we can click them mm -hmm. down here you can also click and mm -hmm. drag to select both of them and we can do like control group three so one and then two and then if we hit three we click both so one and two so you can see it's actually switching between the two and then we hit three and do that that's kind of a cool thing and we can hit tab and we see um we get to see what's going on so we have a bunch of caravanners and then we have the caravaner master and Got it. perfect so we can walk out of here. We do have a request. If we hit J, we'll bring up the journal, go away. And it'll tell us what to do. So we have a moment's respite. I click some spring berries to concoct a remedy. And that'll tell us roughly where to go. It's a dis distinctive bush. Anyone so we need to go supplies? find a bush. I've this guy here is a salesman. I'm wearing a simple, mostly neat clothes. Transfixed. Ragged tear in his whole tunic. wagon full of goods to sell. Not enough shirts for the road. Say, is there anything you need? So he does. He has some stuff we can buy. Uh, don't really want to buy anything because we're we're right away in the beginning in the game. Not too difficult. I guess if we were min-maxing, we could. But we're pretty fine. Exploration is key. Perfect. Oh. I'll have your water soon enough. Huh. Stream's not going anywhere. Can we tell him not to go? There's a grove nearby. I'll have what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Schnarfield, Sparfield, whatever his name is. So we've got our little dude here. He can stealth, mm -hmm. right? So let's Stay stealth right. him down. No problem. Oh, here's some berries. What is that? Ooh, add myths work. Huh? And we can increase the speed. So we can double the speed. Got and it. it goes into fast mode. So we can explore a little bit faster. This is the path through the narrow canyon, back to the way we came. Too far. All let's right. Check by those outcroppings. There's a dead deer, and a wolf with the deer. Eh? Let's okay, this go. is going to be our first attack. <laughs> so scouting, you can see there's the yellow triangle here. And uh, the yellow triangle is how much they recognize that we are here. So we can blind him, and we can come in with uh, our second guy, need? and we can try tripping him. So let's go, let's do this blind again. Oh. I wonder if I can get it off. Oh, no, it saw us. 
Ability to turn to me combat, it pauses beforehand. So it's all real time combat unless uh, he scored a crit. Crit is better than a hit. I just about one shot him. Almost did. I hit him with two hits. That doesn't say sure. much. So there are two different things here too. This is saying we have uh, our typical endurance bar. The endurance is, you'll see the profile get lower and lower. It'll go redder and redder. And then we have a health bar on the side. So if the endurance gets low, then we get knocked out. And if the health bar goes low, we die. Makes sense, right? We can collect the wolf pet pelt. And there are also status effects that we'll need to use. And then there's a camping thing that we can do as well. So cool. Uh, what's, oh, there's a berry bush back there. What's this one? Burned lady. Let's go back to get this one. This is it. Oh, there we go. We got this springberry bush, whatever it was called. Yep, springberry bush. Perfect. So, here we go. Raider, no offense. Been known in a share of dangerous people. You remind me of one of them. Okay. I've been known I can liberate certain underappreciated values from their owner's homes. Hey, hey, that's me. Yeah? How is it you happen to come here? So this is kind of telling how a uh, little backstory of Calicia, or whatever her name is, uh, and my little rogue. Caught stealing again, had me hang. This is us. We're trying to get out of here. And let's see. It's been a long time since I've been this way, but I always look like it did. The Lord's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. Here to settle. So we're settlers traveling to a new land and we can't go. Like the rest of it. It's a hard offer to pass up. You won't find many offers like these in these parts, believe me. Got some big plan in store? Uh, I'm going to lay low for a while. Trying to not draw too much attention. Guild of Vale's days away from any real civilization. I'm wasting time here. Give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Sounds good. Let's get back to camp. You know, I want to hold my breath on Sparfield getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like, when he feels like it. We should check on him first. Slap him around a little bit. Stream's just that way. Let's go get him. Huh? Perfect. Okay, now let's check the map. M key brings up the map. You can see we did all of that. We can go back to Hyoden. Uh, let's actually check out... Let's continue running here. See if we can find anyone. There's a bridge that goes over the stream. Let's see if Sparfield's back here. There's a deer that ran off. Here's some things. Travelers, maybe, or looters. Bandits. Bad sign, you figure it. Corpse is cold to the touch and the smell wafts in the putrid waves. We got a little bit of leather armor, which is... Mm, recovery speed's a little bit faster, but it's less DR. And we get some lockpicks. That's kind of cool. Nothing, nothing too active there. Let's go back across this bridge. And bridges are always choke points in games, aren't they? Hey, what's this? What a surprise. Aha, uh -huh. crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Clisia waits nearby. Keeping watch, as you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Uh-oh. Out of the trees emerges Sparfield. Sparfell. One of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangest to his gait. A spastic wobble in his ordinary deft stride as he moves toward with, towards you with a labored breath. Sparful, are you alright? Sparfle's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses f forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Well, there goes Sparfle. I love that name. Sparfle. Ambush! Ambush! No way! Could not have thought that was going to happen. And I do really like it that the game pauses in between stuff here. So we mm -hmm. got our two guys. We can go run up and blind this guy, and we can What's use he? you to attack him. But... We can do the knockdown for a little bit of CC. So we're going to use, you can see up there, we have the blinding effect going. We're going to run over. And there we go. Sometimes weapon or spell isn't suited for penetrating armor. Damage reduction. You'll hear your characters complain about it when it happens. Take key, the damage type is being blocked. And switch to a weapon or spell that does something different. Oh, there we go. We blinded this one. So there should be less to hit. And I think... Uh, this is being blocked from the bludgeoning damage. We don't have any additional weapons right now that I'm aware of. So what will happen is we'll get we'll get our little blitz down here to nuke this guy. And then he'll run back and we'll attack him. And it doesn't look like we... Oh, we started him on fire, which is good. And now that he's flanked, we have a higher chance of crit, if you remember from our spells, our skills, and a character creation. Perfect! 
death to them. Hmm. And now it does take a little bit of time oh, to disengage from treasure. combat. We can jump in, claim the loot, a little hide armor and a bow, and a little bit of money. Hmm. Perfect. Let's Got go it. back, and we're going to go talk to the dudes at the camp. See what happens here. And I do have it in fast mode. Oh, or we're not going to talk to the dudes at camp. A couple hunters. Let's uh, try to pull them back. Now, our skills are back mm -hmm. up. We get two knockdowns per encounter. Yeah. As we get one blinding strike per encounter, too. Okay, we got this guy coming down. Or try to flank him a little bit. Let's try to uh, blind you, you, and then we're going to try to knock you down. Maybe we can get this. Oh, we do have the archer in here. You didn't you didn't hit that again? How about we try to knock this one down? That's better. And that's not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. We'll just focus fire on this guy. Actually, come up here and interrupt. Yeah? You come up here and interrupt. What you need? You keep mashing on this dude because it's two shield guys and won't gonna do much. Hmm. There we go. Ow. There we go. A little bit less uh, damage reduction, we can just nuke him down. Make sure we do have another knockdown we might be able to get off. Oh, and it actually worked. Good. Keep smacking him when he's on the ground. Near death, you can see in the top left corner, they died. And they're both dead. Perfect. Check it out. Now we'll have to wait a little bit to loot, and then we get the stuff that they had. We need to loot this guy individually. Perfect. We'll go back yeah. to camp, and then we'll go through the loot when we get done with that. Uh-oh. All around you lie massacred remains of the other travelers, preppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy on the blood-damp earth. Calicia points to the back left of her mouth, puts the back of her left hand to her mouth, <laughs> as to ward off a horror like a poisonous vapor. <gasps> Gasp. A handful of dark figures stand above the fallen, treading on limbs, back, and backs, and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs as they prepare to add you to the sprawling, sprawling pile beneath them. One of them, towering when severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, hold a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as Hyoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a light fight you will lose. So we can do this. Uh, why have you done this? We have not trespassed. We are merely passing through. If we had lore, if we had some lore, we could use this one. Uh, I don't know what they did, but I didn't have anything to do with it. Murderers, you will pay. Try to kill us. Either way, we might make it easy. We have not trespassed. Let's try to do the diplomatic route. Your words carry no weight. When I have seen the truth in my own eyes, blood must be paid for this intrusion. Uh-oh. So I say again, lay down your arms. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. Only a fool attacks a weak enemy while the stronger one yet lives. Perception, your courage is a mask. None of you is slain a true warrior. Is yet, has yet slain a true warrior. Uh, we could put down our weapons or we can rush them. Let's do this perception. Man, brow Increases questioning. We have killed many trespassers like you. Your kills are sloppy. The wounds on the people are inefficient and off target. This is the work of an untested man accustomed to carelessness. The man bares his teeth. He looks at Hyoden helpless, his eyes shut tightly for the killing blow. <laughs> we'll see whose courage is a mask. Whoopsies. He shoves Hyoden, Hyoden towards you. As he does so, the man rakes his blade against Hyoden's torso. Hyoden screams and stumbles forward. A wide gash in his clothing begins to bloom crimson. The man sets his feet to engage you, his axe raised high. Oh, the dude lived. Sweet. But he does have bruised ribs. Negative 22 fortitude and 2 constitution. Wow. What you need? Okay, so we're going to do some knockdowns. Let's try to knock down that yeah. hunter. This guy's the main one. He's the leader, so we'll blind him. Hmm? We do have control over this. Ooh, it's another rogue. Ah, so he's knocked down. Oh wow, we just totally nuked the leader. How can I help? Okay, attack the hunter, and then we'll do a knockdown attack. Hmm. What? Are... Hey, How you. Can I help? Bruise that guy. Two. And then you attack this guy. There we go. There we go. 
So look at that CC go. Now all three of our melee guys are going to be right on this one. And he is down for the count. Perfect. So let's loot the bodies. There we go. Your enemy lies... Supine? Supine? On the ground, unable to rise, his companions now silent among the dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks at you, but at the sky above him, above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath the choking sighs, a whisper of wind stirs in the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as close as good, good. The gods are just. A queer smile across his face. I am ready. Wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin like a jetty beginning to succumb to the surge of a great wave, where it pierces you and it felt, feels as though it rending you apart from within. That doesn't sound very good. Seated against the wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Odeman's body stirs. With great effort, he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely upon you are barely open. He looks directly at Get you. Inside. Run! Oh, and there we go. Inside. Running. Tell you what, guys, this is going to do it for the first episode. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and stay tuned for a lot more of it. So, keep your stick on the ice. We'll catch you next time.